Sumpit got the vining jasmine moved from the bags into the pot. Um, this is the blue butterfly pea. These are those blue flowers that I keep talking about that they put in rice and stuff. But uh, anyhow, um, there's some more of these back here, but they're not quite big enough to transfer into the ground yet. But the reason she moved these is because she wanted to just kind of get them in nursery mode for a few days before we put them in the racks that we put on the bridge. Um, pretty uneventful. Brought them out here, held them up there with one hand, tacked them, and went through and full well with them. I shouldn't say full well, but I didn't weld the bottom. Two reasons, I want some place for water to get out if it does get in there. And I didn't want to hang upside down there and lose my helmet in the pond. So yeah, as soon as they've had their couple days in nursery mode over there, we'll get them out here. And then we'll get some mesh on this bridge, get it covered. Um, I may just run a piece along here for now. And then as the vines get moved up here, then add the rest over the top. I don't know, we'll see. Or I might just run them this way across. I don't know, I haven't decided, haven't thought about it until right now. I did mow the grass on the island uh, two days ago. Yeah, two days ago. Um, I wish now, and I talked about this when I made the decision, but I regret now that I didn't smooth that out more before I put the grass down. And I, and I remember talking about it on camera. I don't know if it made it through editing, but I was like, ah, screw it, I don't care. It ain't that big a deal, but it makes it a little rougher. Uh, trying to mow it when it's all humpy and bumpy but the reason I made that decision at that time is because it was still raining and washing out and I was trying to figure out the drain pipes so I just said to hell with it and put the grass down as you can see it's looking pretty good and it's feeling pretty good now I just need these trees to grow and get a hammock in here Weaver nest. For those of you who don't know, that's a bird nest. And the reason I didn't do the update on the bridge pot holders yesterday was because I was busy getting this installed. Um, so, as you can see, I added the conduit and the two switches I talked about. This fan here is on this switch now instead of on the light. So when you turn the light off, it doesn't turn the fan off. And then I run the second switch over here. I will get a wall mounted fan here of some kind, a small 16 inch one or something, and just have it blowing down here. I don't know if it's an outlet or a direct wire yet because I haven't got the fan. So I've got the outlet right there ready to go in if I need it, but if not, I'll just direct wire, we'll run the wires from the fan into that box and just tie it together and cover it up because I need to free up her floor space because I took most of it over here. And I'll just let you know when the fan's done. Like I said, I haven't even got it yet, so I don't know, maybe we'll go to Cantalac later today or tomorrow or Sissiket or somewhere, I don't know. We haven't even talked about it, I haven't even thought about it, honestly. So I think the uh, mesh on the bridge is probably next, but I gotta address something else first. I was sitting here editing the last video just a couple hours ago and I seen something out of the corner of my eye, I looked over and one of them damn dogs was in the kitchen. Because we leave this house open like this every day, all day long. Airflow. The damn dog was in the kitchen. So I run it out and it went, same place it went before, is between the gate and that column out at the driveway. There's about that much space in there that they just duck around the end and go through it. So I've got some small round rod that you saw in that soundbar stand video that I didn't use. I've got plenty of it anyhow, but I'll just take that and verify my clearance on both ends and just put a little frame right out here that there's no way it can hit here, but it'll cover this up, block it. I don't think this goes all the way beyond that post. I think it stops just out here, but I haven't verified it yet. But either way, I'll just put it so it don't hit either side and then that will keep them out of there. I haven't seen any go through this side yet. I might have to put one over here too. Well, I'll build. I'll just build two of them and tack them on both sides and be done with it. 
because there's clearance to go all the way down there with it. Another day, another project to add to the list. It's time to answer the big question, what it cost? The solar system. First, let me say that if you're thinking about doing a solar system yourself, after watching me do it, a couple things you better understand that there's going to be some electrical knowledge you need. Now, I'm never trained. I'm not certified. I'm not nothing. But I have been doing electrical stuff on my own for years. Um, second thing you need to know is that inverter is a all-in-one hybrid inverter. So if you think you can just go out and buy an inverter and hook it up the way I did, isn't going to work. That box of breakers, the C-box, is specially engineered, designed, put together, whatever you want to say it, by the inverter manufacturer for that inverter, which means that all the disconnect, the breakers, whatever you want to call them, they're all sized accordingly for that system. So don't think you can just go out and buy an inverter and start plugging wires in it or slap some breakers on it because there's also some uh, surge protectors and stuff in there that I did not talk about before. Now, if you do want to attempt it on your own because you do have some electrical ability, I think that's great. I caught a lot of criticism on YouTube because I don't know what I'm doing. Da, 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 I shouldn't be messing with it. Da, 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 but as you saw, I didn't have any issues. Um, so people like just flapping their jaw. So if you do it, expect some of that. Now, if you're not on YouTube or the Internet doing it, then you probably don't have to worry about it too much because nobody needs to know. So with all that out of the way, let's get down to the cost. Um, the inverter is a, I don't know, I don't know how they pronounce it. It's P-O-W capital M-R. So Palmer, Palmister, I don't know. Palmer 6.2 kilowatt hybrid all-in-one inverter. All-in-one, back to what I was talking about earlier. That inverter also has a built-in um, like battery regulator and some other things that if you piecemeal a system together, and you don't use a hybrid all-in-one inverter, you're going to have to figure out all that other stuff and get it put together. And that's why I took that inverter, because I didn't want to have to go through all that. Uh, you might be able to get a cheaper inverter, but it's probably not going to be as well equipped as these. They make smaller ones and larger ones, the same company. Uh, somebody in the comments said, oh, you bought a cheap inverter, blah, 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 blah. But I'm telling you, I've had zero problems with it. And it just switches back and forth flawlessly. You're sitting there with lights on or whatever running, and if it switches from whatever, solar to batteries, batteries to solar, PEA, whatever, you can't even tell it. It just switches over. I'm happy to say we have not had a power outage since we got that. Now, that's not saying we haven't lost power. I'm just saying we haven't had a power outage because if we did, it switched over. I never knew it, and it switched back, and I didn't know it. So... And I have to believe that's the case because, like I said before, we were getting one to three power outages a week, maybe sometimes even more, um, for one to three, four, five hours. I don't know. If, yeah, we had one five-hour stint, but usually it's between one and three hours when that goes out. And I just got tired of it because it's just inopportune most of the time when it happens. Um, there's times you're coming home. You go to hit the gate, the gate won't open. You're like, what the hell? And now the power must be out. You go climb the fence, get in here, get the key, unlock the gate, roll it open. I just got tired of that shit. So anyhow, back to the inverter. It's an all-in-one hybrid uh, 6.2 kilowatt inverter. Uh, the inverter off of Lazada was 10,570 baht delivered. And that I don't know if it's standard or not, but it came with a free Wi-Fi connector that you just plug it in the bottom uh, once you get the thing hooked up and then turn a Bluetooth on on your phone, allows you to connect to it, and you set that up on your Wi-Fi for your house, and then from there you can access it anywhere via the Internet. Uh, the C box, which is that bottom box with all the breakers and the shutoffs in it and the uh, surge protectors, 2,750 baht. Went up to the solar supplier up there. I'm going to call him a wholesaler, but I don't know what he is. But um, got a lot of stuff there. Really super nice people. I bought three 100 amp batteries with built in uh, BMS, which is battery management systems in them, um, which is another thing that you would have to have if you don't have this inverter. 
you have to have something to control the charge and the voltage in those batteries. In my understanding, I didn't do much research on it because I didn't need one. Um, so 60,000 baht for the three batteries. Then I bought nine 600 watt panels and you can get all over the place on these panels when you start shopping for them. Um, the big thing with this inverter, and I imagine it's all of them, but I'm just to cover my ass saying with this inverter is you cannot exceed a total input of 500 volts from the panels. And then there is an upper limit on how many watts you can put in it, but my nine 600 watt panels did not exceed the upper threshold of the watt input. The panels for nine of those was one was 18,000 baht. I think in an earlier video I said they were 1,800 per panel. It wasn't. It was 18,000 for all of them at 2,000 per panel. Now, he did have some there that were 1,800 each, and they were 600 watts, same voltage, um, but they were, they're, I think they're a polymer finish versus a glass finish. And I think the advantage, if I understand it correctly, because as you all know, I don't know a lot about solar, but the advantage to glass is it's less prone to scratching, which later on in life um, restricts the amount of UVs that can get to the cells in it. So the glass is better. They are quite a bit heavier, my understanding. I don't know, because I bought glass ones and that's all I've lifted. Mounting hardware for those. And this includes the, the rails, the brackets to put the rails on the roof. And then the brackets that hold the panels to the rails, 1,900 baht, pretty damn cheap. Wire to run from the panels to the inverter. This is going to be a variable depending on uh, where you set your panels and how far you are from your inverter. But I bought 50 meters of wire. It was 20 meters of red and 30 meters of black because, as I said before, negative on one end, positive on the other. So I had to run it across the 10 meters of panel and tie them together and run it in. So 50 meters of wire, 1,500 baht. The battery wires. This is going to be two jumper wires per battery. Um, let me rephrase that. The bat, when you buy the batteries from this guy, he gives you the jumper wires. So there was no additional cost for the jumper wires. The battery wire I had to buy was from the batteries to the C-box and the C-box to the panel. And I didn't know how much I was going to need because I had no idea how I was going to set it up or configure it. So I just bought two meters of wire. And that's the two pieces you saw in that video where I was wiring it. Um, two meters long with a connector on each end. That's going to be a variable depending on where you buy it. But it was 1,600 baht. And then, as you, if you, and then if you recall, I got home and I needed a ground rod and some miscellaneous wires and some connectors, terminal ends, and some few things like that. I spent another 1,240 baht for the ground rod and miscellaneous stuff once I got home. I spent 600 baht for labor for the two guys to come over here and help us get them up on the roof. And then when it was all said and done, we had it hooked up and I got a slight feel for what I, the three batteries were going to do for me. I decided to go back and get two more while we were out on our bombing run, so to speak. That's running from the bombs, not bombing people. So I bought two more of the 100 amp batteries. They were 20,000 baht per piece. And he gave me a 4,000 baht discount. So all in, when I walked out with the two batteries and the connecting wires, it was 36,000 baht. So here's the big number. The total, all in, finished, done, put to bed, 133,756 baht. The five batteries took up 96,000 of that. So if, if you're not looking at batteries and you just want to see what, it'll, see what it'll cost you to set it up minus the batteries, it's going to be about, what, 43,500 if you do what I did. Uh, and then the batteries is a huge variable because there's all different configurations, sizes, brands, price ranges, U.S. dollars. All in, the 133000 come in at $4,080. So that's $4,080 complete, installed, walked away, running system. Had it, I went and got the two additional batteries at 36000 baht. That would put the total cost with three 100-amp batteries at $3,010.
and the three batteries are plenty enough for a backup system like I was going for originally. But once I got it in and I had that money invested, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go get two more batteries, try to get to the point where I can get most of my money back over the course of the next five or six years by dropping my utility bill down significantly. Like I said before, it'll never go to zero. But I should take a big chunk of it off. With the five batteries, yesterday, all my batteries fully charged at the end of the day. Uh, we sit and watched Game of Thrones last night in the house with the AC running. So it ran the big unit all evening. And about 11 o'clock, went to bed, uh, switched the AC over to the 18,000 BTU unit in our bedroom. And that ran all night. I got up this morning about 6 o'clock. Uh, obviously, the unit was still running. Went in, checked the system. Um, it was still running off batteries. And the sun light, no, the sun hadn't come up yet, but the light was coming up. So it was pulling in almost nothing but like 10 watts. But it was still running on the panels according to the, the box. Um, by the time we got enough sun to start picking up the load that we were starting to put into it for the day, meaning I was running around, got the coffee pot running, some fans blowing some air around, whatever. The batteries got below the uh, threshold on the inverter and went to charge mode. But because there wasn't enough sunlight from the panels to handle the house load and the charge mode, it switched over to PEA. Currently, that is set up so that those batteries, well, it was set up to the batteries had to get up to 54 volts before it would switch back to PEA. I just took that down to 51 volts because I think the charge threshold for these batteries was 53.4. If I got to keep in mind that I did this to avoid blackouts. So I need a charge in those batteries because if the power would have went out at whatever, 7.30, 8 o'clock this morning, the system would have just shut down. I wouldn't have had anything. Because the batteries were below the 30% threshold, the sun wasn't up high enough to create enough energy to run what we were consuming in the house. PEA's out. The thing shuts down. I got no power. I have got uh, communications cables coming for the batteries. They'll probably be here in a day or two. And then I'm going to try hooking them each battery up to the inverter so the inverter can better manage the batteries rather than just through the charge cables. It'll actually have a communications from the onboard BMS to the inverter, and I should just get a little more efficient and be able to better manage the batteries. I do not have those wires in this cost. Um, they weren't much. I think they're less than 1,000 baht for all of them. Now, if you go to one of these inverters, keep in mind that the communications wire is a special wire that has to be, each end has to be, wired specific one for the battery one for the inverter they're not just standard wires that you can buy and plug in so don't do that um, if you're not sure what you need if you try to do this just get a hold of me and i will share with you the information that i found on that wire i'm actually going to have to cut a wire and rewire the plug on the end of it for the inverter end of that communications wire so anyhow that's it that's the story on the solar I think today we're going to run off somewhere, either Cantillac or Sisaket, and find a fan for in that room so I can get that fan off the floor and get it out of her way. One more thing I want to say um, before I get off here. I am now current on my videos. After we were off on our little bombing sabbatical that we were on, those videos got caught up. Um, I've had some comments about the videos being so far out, especially with the bombing. People were wondering what was going on. So going forward, I'm probably just going to try to stay current on my videos. It's much easier for me in editing and uploading and everything to have a couple videos out. But it doesn't seem like you all like that too much. So I'm just going to try to stay current. Probably going to see fewer videos. YouTube's not going to like that. So with all that said, I'm going to get off here, I'll wrap this video up, and we will talk to you in the next video.